something thrilling about classic cars and hot rods that have been restored. Many of these old vehicles were once left for dead, but now they mesmerize people by the hundreds, and they just can't keep their eyes off them. Believe me, I know that feeling. Well, if you've ever wondered, how does someone even go about restoring a car in the first place? You're in luck, because that's exactly what we're going to cover today on this bonus session of Manly Moments. Hey, don't touch my car. Sorry. Well, I absolutely love old cars. In all honesty, I don't have a clue as to what it takes to restore one. Fortunately, I know someone who does. Come on. Hey guys, you're in for a real treat today as we are at Simplex Garage, where my friend and car restoration expert, Dave Statt, spends countless hours bringing old cars back to life. Dave, how's it going? Come on in. Doing great, Robbie. Glad you're here. Glad to be here. Well, first things first, it takes a lot to put into car restoration. It takes time, it takes money, it takes space, and it takes know-how. And I look at this place and think, this is amazing. How in the world did you get here? Can you give us a brief explanation of your history with car restoration? Certainly. When I was a young boy, about seven, my dad brought home a 1917 Jeffrey. And he went to Kansas to get it. And throughout my childhood, until I was about 18, we toured in that car, traveled in it. The whole summer was spent in the backseat of that car with my brother and I. And uh, through that time, my dad purchased more cars and restored several. And I was out there with him an awful lot of the time. And it kind of got into my blood. I love doing it. It's my passion. That's hands-on experience, and you were along for the ride, huh? That's right. That's exactly right, Robbie. Well, there's absolutely no way we can cover everything you need to know to restore a car in five minutes. But I thought it would be fun to take a look at your shop today and get a little tour of what goes on in the process. Are you willing to do that? Let's do it. Let's do it. First things first, you have to find an automobile that is interesting to you and that you want. And my own preference, our automobiles made before 1915. And they go all the way back. Uh, my earliest car is 1905. You can find a car usually by word of mouth. Often, <clears throat> you'll have a car that you really want and you'll talk to the guy and let him know you want it. And maybe it takes 15 years before I finally sell it to you. But you try to be first on the list when it's time. Once you've found an antique car that you want to restore, you have to do the research. Fortunately, over the years, I've spent a lot of time gathering books, periodicals, magazines uh, that explain about the cars. So I have a place to come and research so that I know what's correct about a car, what needs corrected, what everything's supposed to look like, and over time, you get to know the car really well by the time you're done with it. For example, right now, I'm working on this 1980 Matheson, and the engine and the chassis were separated. One was worked on in one place, the rest of the car was elsewhere being worked on, and the owner asked me to reunite the engine with the chassis. And one of the tools I use is here's a photograph of the engine from 1908, a lot of detail in there. This is from an original manual and this is how you go about making it exactly correct. The early automobiles had wood frame bodies, which means there's a wood structure, skeleton, underneath all that sheet metal. And often that has to be reproduced. Sometimes a body has to be made from scratch because it's missing. And this is my wood shop where I can reproduce wood parts symbol a body or any, any part that I have. Hey Dave, I'm curious, what on earth are these? They look like bike chains, a little bigger though. Uh, these are drive chains. Many of the automobiles, especially before 1910, had chain drive. And so there was a large sprocket on the rear wheel and a smaller one up forward, and the car was driven by big chains like this. Well, what in the world is all this? This is like the fine china of car restoration. Can you explain this to us? Well, it's Yes, this is uh, the nipple plating for one automobile. Uh, these are the shock absorbers, these are the hubcaps, of course. And then just all the little pieces, all the little detail parts that make the car beautiful. One of the best parts is when you're putting the car together for the last time, putting this stuff on. It really makes it pop. It's like the icing on the cake. Got it. So the goal is to find something that looks like this and turn it in to something that looks like this. Wow, that is simply amazing stuff, Dave. 
And while we're on the topic of restoration, I can't let this opportunity slip by without talking a little bit about the restoration that happened in your own life. And a lot of people look at this shop and say, well, this guy's a lucky stiff. That's not the case. Something really transformative happened in your life. Can you share a little bit about that with us? Certainly. Uh, like a lot of folks in my youth and 20s and 30s, uh, I struggled with a lot of issues. Uh, a lot of it was being angry, angry with other people, angry with myself, didn't give myself uh, any slack at all. I'm very tough on myself. And uh, I was led to Christ about 20 years ago by a group of people who loved me for reasons I could not figure out. And through that transformation or restoration, if you will, I've been able to give myself a lot more grace, others a lot more grace, and it's all because of the grace of God. That is powerful stuff, Dave. Thanks for sharing. And while you're in the sharing mood, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind if I hop behind the wheel of this vehicle right now. Uh, I don't know, Robbie. Uh, you know what you're doing? Wow, this is really cool. Mind if I fire it up? Be careful. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Hey, can we talk a little bit more about forgiveness? Hey, if you're new to this channel and would like to see more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. And if you're a fan of old cars, go ahead and give it the thumbs up, leave a comment. And we will see you next time for another installment of Manly Moments.